Hiya, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about an international doctor's journey to the UK, in particular a Ugandan one, and a little bit of my own personal story. So if you'd like to know more, then keep on watching. I decided to do this video because when I was looking for information about how to work in the UK when I first got the idea to do so. I tried to look for people that I knew who had done it and I didn't know anyone who had done it. Um, after asking friends and family, I eventually found someone who I went and met in person. And I know there's like the websites are there, obviously. There's a GMC website, there's all these websites that have all the information. But I think it kind of feels a bit, it feels different hearing it from someone you know or even though you don't know the person, it feels different hearing it from uh, someone speaking than reading. I don't know if that's just me, or if that's a Ugandan thing, or if that's an African thing, or if, 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 if you relate, do you feel like it feels better to hear someone explaining the process to you? If you agree, can you just let me know in the comments below? To work in the UK, what you'll be looking for is uh, registration, medical, general medical council registration, that's GMC registration with a license to practice. And um, the steps I'm going to talk about is overall leading us to that. What you, have you got to do in order to get GMC registration, which you can then use to apply for jobs? The GMC has three main requirements for getting GMC registration with a license to practice. The first one is you should have gone to a medical school that's on the world medical directory. So that's a medical school must be one that they think is good enough, I guess. You must have already completed your internship. If you're doing your internship, then please persevere. <laughs> you can't just get out now. Um, persevere, finish your internship. It must be at least 12 months duration. So um, it must be 12 months duration and it has to follow a, a certain pattern. So you can't just do like 12 months in medicine or 12 months in surgery. It, you have to have a, a mix of both. If you want more information, obviously, I'll put the link in the description below to go to the actual website where you can find the actual details that they need. So once you finish your 12 months of internship, congratulations, you did it. Internship can be really tough, especially in Uganda. Um, once you've done your internship, then the next thing they need is proof of enough clinical experience to work in the UK. So this can be proven in four ways. So the first one, which is what I'm going to talk about, is the PLAB brute. So they require you to do an English language test and it's either the IELTS, so the International English Language Testing System, or the OET. These exams are, can be done in Uganda or most countries in the world. And um, in the IELTS, you need a, a score of at least seven in each of the sections, and overall, you need at least a 7.5. Um, after you've done the English exam and got the required results, you can then apply to do the PLAB exams. So the PLAB exams, these are, the, these are currently the UK's medical licensing exams. So um, they have two steps. The first step is the PLAB 1, so PLAB 1 is an MCQ, so it's 180 questions that are done in three hours. And then after that, then you then do an OSCE, you then do a PLAB 2. So the PLAB 2 is an OSCE exam that is 18 stations, each having 8 minutes, and it's only done in the UK. That's in Manchester at the moment. Um, PLAB 1 is done four times a year, and PLAB 2 is done throughout the year. So every, every week, it happens about three times in a week. Once you've passed these two exams, then you can go on to apply for your GMC registration. So you apply for GMC registration, and then once you've got that, you can apply for jobs. The good thing with the UK, unlike some other countries like, say, the US, that I'm aware of, is that you don't need to apply to go into a residency program. You can just apply for a regular job, like there's jobs for junior doctors that are not particularly training jobs, so these are called non-training jobs. So after you've applied and you've got your job, the next thing you've got to do is apply for your visa. So the visa at the moment is called the health and social care visa. So that's a tier two type of work visa. And I think it's a really great time to be applying just because at the moment, all doctor's jobs are on the shortage occupation list. So meaning the UK recognizes that there's a shortage of medical doctors. So they've created this new visa type that is 
first of all cheaper to apply for faster to get a decision and is generally more straightforward path so you apply and after a short time you've got your visa and for a much lesser fee than previously once you've got your job you've got your visa then you can come to the uk and start working and welcome you did it the ugandan bit i think begins from medical school so first of all as i said your medical school must be on the list of accepted ones and um in uganda we actually have nine medical schools that are approved on the world medical directory that the gmc would would, would agree with so that's Makere university gulu university Mbara university kiu Kampala International University in Ishaka, Uganda Christian University in Mukono, Busitema University, King Caesar University in Kampala, and then there's Chigezi, Chigezi International School of Medicine in Chigezi, and also Habib Medical School, which is in the Islamic University in Mbale. So those are the nine medical schools from which you can follow this path. So if you're in medical school at the moment, then you're in one of these medical schools, then you're on the right track. Um, if you're not, then that's still fine. You can email the GMC or contact the GMC yourself because I do know of someone whose medical school was not on the list of approved ones, but he still eventually got GMC registration. So there's a lot of things that, it depends on your personal situation. So don't be discouraged by anything that can always be our way. After the medical schools is the PLAB 1. PLAB 1 also cannot be done in Uganda. You have to travel elsewhere. There's a list of countries where PLAB 1 can be done and I'll put them on the screen somewhere. In Africa, the nearest to us is Sudan. Then after that, Nigeria, Ghana or South Africa. Most people that I know, they go to Dubai just because Dubai has an easier visa, I think, to get and maybe they already have some other things they have to do or they've already traveled there. So people go to Dubai, they do their PLAB 1. Then they go back home, wait for results, and when you've been successful, the next thing you've got to do is apply for a visit visa, go to Manchester in the UK, do the PLAB 2, then you can, obviously, you're done, apply for GMC registration, and then after applying for GMC registration, you can apply for jobs, get your job, apply for tier 2 visa, and then you can come and start working in the UK. Hooray, you did it. So my journey started before I knew it started. Um, I did my IELTS twenty in I did my IELTS in um, March 2016, and at the time I did it, I wasn't planning to do these medical licensing exams. I was actually planning to come to do a master's for just one year, and then I had other plans. Like UK was not my number one destination at that time, so I did the IELTS, and I remember I didn't think much of it. I didn't really do much research. I didn't really study a lot. I just did a little bit of practice on the website and then I went for the exam. I was, I was fortunate that I passed and um, when I eventually came to the UK in 2017 of September, I was like, since I'm here, let me, let me do these exams and see what it's like. But the problem was um, your IELTS has to be valid at the time that you sit your exam. IELTS is only valid for two years. So my IELTS was expiring on the 19th of March, 2018, and I had to do PLAB one on 15th of march 2018 it was four days to my club one results um being invalid expiring and also i was 39 weeks pregnant and it was three days to my due date so there was a lot of pressure there was so much pressure on me because it's like what's going to come first is the baby going to come first am i going to be able to do this exam and if i if i don't do the exam that would have meant resetting the exam which I really didn't want to do at that time because of the costs involved. So I did my uh, my PLAB 1 and I remember because, anyway, because I was a first time mom, I didn't know about, I, and I didn't research so much about it. I kept thinking, the main thing I was afraid of was what if the water breaks? <laughs> so I went for the exam wearing adult diapers, guys. <laughs> I went wearing adult diapers. But anyway, I did it. I went for the exam. I was successfully I was successful through the exam without any incident and then I went back home and um the baby luckily was late. They came as, as most time as most babies are anyway. They came a few a, a few days about 10 days later. I have the baby and then I'm doing my masters as well. So I decided to do my um PLAB 2 in July of that same year 2018 just because at that time I would have finished my master's exams that were in, that were in May so 
I finish my master's exams in May, and then I have my PLAB 2 in, in July 2018. I went, I did the PLAB 2, and um, I think it went well. It wasn't too difficult, because, you know, for PLAB 2, they recommend going for um, academies. Most people go for academies. There are all these academies out there that people go for. You go, they prepare you, they tell you what to do, they tell you what to expect. Um, you go do the exams. And then after that, you apply for GMS registration. After my PLAB 2, I had to do my IELTS again because IELTS is needed, especially when you're sitting your PLAB 1 and also when you're applying for GMS registration. So just because I'd done my IELTS and it had expired, for PLAB 2, you don't actually need IELTS. So I did the PLAB 2. And then now I had to do IELTS again. I go for IELTS. I'm like, oh, should be nothing much. I've done this before. I go, I do my IELTS. And I failed to get the results. I failed to get the grades that are required. Um, I kept. I got 6.5 in writing, and I need you to get a 7. That's usually the one that gives people a hard time. It's the writing bit. Um, the way these people want you to write. Eh? It's like academic writing. First of all, it's out. It's academic. It's not just any writing. That's what makes it even trickier. So after this, uh, the first out, I, fail, I failed to get it. Then two weeks later, I repeat. Again, I get 6.5. Then this time, I really, really studied. To be honest, second time around, I didn't really change anything. I was like, ah, let me just go and repeat it. But then I didn't change my strategy. So I'll do a more detailed video about that. And then I um, go back. I do it for the third time. Third time was the charm. I passed. And then finally, we apply for GMS registration. Um, I get my GMS registration. And then I got a job. So I was fortunate in that the type of job I applied for um, it's called uh, widening access to specialty training. So WAST, that type of job is a kind of job that you can actually apply for even before you've passed the club. But as long as you've done your IELTS. Maybe I'll do another video on that another day. Um, and when, you, when I applied, I've got a job. I got my job and I started in February 2019 doing the WAST job. It was a one-year program. And after the one year, I then started um, called psychiatry training. So I started that in um, February 2020 and I'm still in my first year just because end of November I had another baby and so I've been on maternity leave and I'm now just returning to work now. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I think I just might go ahead and make individual videos on the different steps that is IELTS, PLAB 1, PLAB 2, GMC registration, tier 2 visa application and maybe work up an application for jobs. If you'd be interested in anything like that, let me know in the comments below. And I'll definitely put all the links that I've talked about to the different official websites, which of course you should anyway be verifying any information you get online. Make sure you always go and check from the official channels. And um, yes, yeah, so if you like this video, please click like. If you have any questions for me, you can put them in the comments below and I'll make sure I get back to you. And if you would like to see more videos like this, then please subscribe. Thank you.